Aloha to the people of Maui. Blessings. My thoughts are with you. My name is Carrie, and I was on the island while you were burning. I was sent there on the 6th of August, and I didn't know why. I hadn't traveled tropical in eight years or so. And then when I saw the fires and I knew Hawaii was burning, I knew I was there for a reason. I'm a spiritual being who has elevated to a very high vibration. The best way I can describe it, if you walk into a room and you know somebody was just having a huge fight, remember, you know that feeling when you walk in, it's like, ugh, it's heavy, heavy, icky energy. When I walk into a room, my vibration is so high, people feel elevated. They feel good and they have no idea why. I have been asked to help the people of Maui, to talk to the people of Maui. I can do it on Zoom right now because I know some of the words I have to say are going to help you. When I was there, all I did was sit in my chair and the people who came to me needed me and we needed to make our connections. Number one, my favorite meeting of all time was the Swami, you know who you are. I'll keep him private. He's a very private man. People said, yeah, the Swami, he never talks. All right. <laughs> really? I can't shut him up. <laughs> Swamis, they're not quiet with everybody. Mostly, I want to say thank you to the two women that kept it together and held it together. I was at the Days Inn in Maui, in Kihei. The pictures I will show right now while I'm talking were from where we were standing in Maui as Lahaina was burning. The women running that place were tireless and they never slowed down and they tried so hard to keep light and be light and love while their entire world was falling apart. Their island was burning. They're running a business. People are there demanding things and the internet crashed on day two. They had plenty on their plates. So Keolani, known as Shisha, and Gemma, thank you. I hope your company thanks you for the work you did. And I want to say thank you to Keolani. That's her Hawaiian name. She made this tea leaf lay and she wasn't sure who she was supposed to give it to. And when she gave it to me and told me of the magic and the power, believe me, it is powerful. And I also brought home my own stuff to grow to make this myself, to grow tea leaf so I can make this for others. But what I want to say to you on the island, and it may not make any sense, but all I want you to know is you are Hawaii. You are Hawaii strong. It sickens me, even looking at this great land that I live, America, to where the Native Americans who always knew how to love the land, preserve the land, and take care of the land, why did we not listen to them? Why did we not learn how you can live in a land, respect the land, give back to the land? I would have thought we would have learned something. Then we go to Hawaii, we take these beautiful tropical lush islands and we bring over our crap. And I don't need to say anything more. There are so many Hawaiians in Hawaii. That is their land their language, their heart, their soul. If anybody knows what that island needs, it's the people who live there. It's the people who are ohana. They are family. They love each other and they come together Hawaii strong and they get stuff done. So for those of us who think we know how to take care of Hawaii and get stuff done, how about we back away and let them tell us what we need? That's the number one thing we need to do. But for Hawaii, what I want you to do, we're not told this enough. We see destruction. We see fire. We see loss. We see death. We see the end for so much. How you feel about all of this at this moment and every moment moving forward is going to make the difference in your reality and the reality of those around you. I don't know how much you know about collective consciousness, but when a group of people get together and they all decide that let's hate that one person or that one thing and let's make it ugly, it's amazing what collectively you could do with your minds by getting them all together and shrinking something down to nothingness. You could do the same for greatness. When you see the devastation around you, you can look at it like, we didn't deserve this. Why did this happen? 
poor us. Or you can look at it the way I'm looking at the writer's strike in Los Angeles. All of these things, the pandemic, all of these things that come to us as, oh my God, it's over. This is the chance for you to course correct, for you to look at things through a different lens that was your life that magnificent when all this happened that suddenly, oh no, it's all gone. Was it really that good? You get to look your life in the eye right here, right now and find the things that brought you gratitude. If you're looking at a pile of rubble where you used to live and the beautiful things that you own that are no longer there, the fact that you're looking at it means you are alive and you have opportunities. And the fact that we create our own reality means you could sit there and woe is me and file insurance claims and cry and whine and hope everything gets repaired for you. Or you could look into your eyes in the mirror and think, who am I and what do I really want? Was this the plan? Because I guarantee 99.9% .9 of you, you were on a path, but you weren't on the path. So when you look at your life and the fact that right now at this moment, you get to start over, you get to start over. Gratitude. If you come from a place of gratitude, if you think, thank you, God, I have my life because stuff has never mattered and it never will. If you put the emphasis on stuff rather than you and what you have and that you're alive and you can course correct and do anything on the planet you want to do now. That's when you soar. When you come from a place of gratitude, be grateful for everything you have. Be grateful for that ladybug on your finger. Be grateful for that chicken in the street, Hawaii. Hello, parking lots everywhere. Be grateful. Find gratitude. Stay in gratitude and expect nothing but good things to come your way. When you live in gratitude, when you come from a space of blessing that which you do have, thanking God and just saying, I've got this, and then expect more good stuff, it keeps coming. Once you get to that space of no longer blaming, no longer feeling sorry for yourself, woe is me, why did this happen? If you live in gratitude, if you go for gratitude, and you just say, thank you, God, what's next for me? And don't plan three things out. What's the one next thing I need to do? Ask and listen. I promise I stake my name on it. It will show up. Get out of your head. Find gratitude in everything. Go help your brother. You want gratitude? Go help your brother. Stand Hawaiian strong. I didn't love Hawaii when I went back. I had a bad taste in my mouth about Hawaii because I went with my ex and my family and my in-laws and we did everything they wanted to do. I never got to just sit and be with the people. This last trip, I had 10 days with you people. And I loved it. It was the most family ohana I've ever experienced. You are strong. You've got this. Rebuild and take care of your own. One thing that came to me during, I was up at four in the morning. I wake up at four now. I get all kinds of messages. What we as people in America need to do if we have a country like Hawaii that we claim is part of ours, I believe out of respect for the country, every white man that has come from America that goes there and says, this is now my home, you should need a complete course in culture, how, why, what they do, why they do it, the language, what it means, hula, learn why those islands are as magical as they are. We should respect it enough to become part of the culture if we go there do the dances, be part of who they are. If we can't do that, vacation and go home. They are their islands. Let's not ruin what is left of them with our hands that we stick in everything. Aloha, mahalo. I will be back. Namaste.